in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Listen, for many of you, while you are seated here, let me tell you why it looks like God is not answering your prayer. It is because he has found out that there is nothing in your life that is interested in glorifying the Lord. There are many people here you're not be, you're not prospering it's an act of god's mercy to you to still keep you relevant because if money touches your hand with this state of heart you will be a casualty first to yourself jesus at the center of my life jesus at the center of my life from beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Koinonia, please hear me. Let me tell you this. If you think what God is doing in this ministry is just because a man of God is powerful called Joshua Selman, think again. Look at me. This is all of me you are seeing. It's not like there's part of me somewhere. This is it you are seeing. You are intelligent and you went to school can a man like this produce this result you are saying no there are some results that men cannot produce my dear people even if you are not spiritual we are educated let me tell you the secret when you hide behind the cross and you say father it is for your glory that this is about this business I want to set up I want to establish the biggest mall in Zaria the biggest mall in Nigeria and the desire is that through the presentation of that excellence or whatever it is there are people who covenanted with God and say Lord your house is in need of resources can you trust me and they meant it and God said that's it clear the way and they woke up in the morning and stumbled into business opportunities that changed their lives in one night when you are talking to them as business people you will see the gaps in their knowledge you will know they are not supposed to get this result however the master has chosen because of the sincerity of their heart is someone learning now this is one of the biggest secrets in this ministry believe me that that lust and that desire i want this i want that i want this and you find out that you are strangely producing results powerful results but nobody in your family is safe through your result all that is happening in your family is just jealousy and envy something is wrong your presentation is not such your presentation is showing them i am better than you not jesus is the one who is behind this is someone learning now yeah. 
a man of God met me one day and he had followed me teaching and I, I, I told him I said if God says I should close down Koinonia now I will do it and he laughed he said Apostle you are bold though I won't make that kind of statement and then by next week come and find out that uh, what if the devil uses a wrong you know image and lies to you and all of that and I told him what are you afraid of your statement is a product of the fear of something what are you afraid of that's what you should solve okay let's assume it was a lie and Satan said it and you close it then what your ego your reputation that's what needs deliverance it's not about closing and opening the ministry no at all for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory I will do anything just to see you before we continue i want you in one minute to pray and say lord i don't know what may have been the purpose for my desire for power and for result some of you you just want to cure hardship some of you you are tired of being looked down on these things are not enough reason please pray in one minute lord search my heart yet again man of god are you praying Apostle, I want to travel to America. What for? Apostle, I want to marry a multi-millionaire. Nothing wrong with that, but what for? Apostle, I think I need a car. Or I need a new car. What for? I want to complete my building project by the end of this year. What for? Do you want to be a celebrity or an ambassador? What are you looking for? Fame or to see the purposes of God lifted through your life? Someone pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand all I've taught so far? There is nothing wrong in desiring results. I've shown you from the scripture. He says we are salt and he says we are light. Are we together? In fact, he even says if your salt loses its saltiness, its ability to preserve, its ability to add taste and value, you will be thrown underfoot and trampled by men. So God desires us to produce results more than we will ever desire. But first things first, the first thing to fix is to know that it is beyond seeing your good works. They must glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Let's touch on one more thing before we pray. Hmm. <laughs> I desire the Father to be revealed and glorified through my life. I desire Jesus to be revealed and glorified. It is our theme. It is our anthem in this ministry. Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Now, very quickly, I want to show you, since we have settled the fact that God is not withholding results from your life, the only thing he's withholding is you destroying yourself and Jesus not being glorified through it. Now that we have gotten that clear, let us take it a step further jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 there are three biblical um, expressions of the glory of god through the life of a man if it is true that god can be glorified in a man then we need to be able to look in detail what are the expressions of glory that can find and must find expression in my life for God to be glorified? 
and here prophet jeremiah taught us number one thus saith the lord let not the wise man the word glory there is the word boast let not the wise man glory in his wisdom so the first expression of glory that can help the saints to be glorified is wisdom he's not saying wisdom is wrong he's just trying to rearrange it relative to something higher which we just addressed so the first is let not the wise man glory in his wisdom everyone say wisdom number two neither the mighty man glory in his might say power that is the second expression of glory and then number three let not the rich man glory in his riches say wealth now please look up these three expressions must be captured in your life if the father is to be glorified in your life number one wisdom number two power number three riches or wealth give us amplified of that statement please jeremiah 9 23 let's see it from amplified it says thus saith the lord let not the wise and skillful person glory and boast in his wisdom and his skill number two let not the mighty and powerful person glory and boast in his strength and power number three let not the person who is rich in physical gratification and earthly wealth glory or boast in his temporal satisfaction and earthly riches relative to these three the bible says next verse 24 so it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom so that is the first expression of glory wisdom number two let not the mighty man amplified says the one who is powerful so power every dimension of power supernatural power most especially is another expression of the glory of god and the third dimension is wealth hallelujah let me tell you what this is supernatural power seems to be the zenith that is what controls the spiritual realm wisdom is what controls the intellectual realm wealth is what controls the physical realm so he says if you want to see the glory of god revealed in and through your life holistically there must be captured in your life and your experience supernatural power you must sustain the ability to bring the realm of the spirit in its entirety under divine obedience you must be able to conquer the intellectual realm by outsourcing a level of wisdom that is higher than human wisdom and then the resources that take away limitation from your life physically that anyone who is able to capture within his space power wisdom and wealth and then on top of that the source and the basis for your confidence does not even become those things but that you know god now your life can be a true reflection of the glory of god i don't have all the time to deal with all of these things but we'll just touch a bit let's start with wisdom wisdom i've done several teachings on wisdom you can get them but just to touch a little bit on wisdom as an expression of god's glory hallelujah in revelation chapter 5 when you read from verse 12 revelation chapter 5 saying with a loud voice just let's go back to amplified uh, let's go back to kjv i meant to say verse 12 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us now power riches wisdom strength honor glory blessings now you see that wisdom was one of the seven things that were purchased for us in redemption 
are we together so by redemption every believer in christ should have access to wisdom every believer in christ paul was praying over the church in ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 i hope we're able to manage those outside if there is ever a need to squeeze them in here even if it's temporarily we're in the season and um it will be fair enough it's better for them to stay somewhere standing than to let's be sure that no matter what it is especially those who are at the edge that they are not affected by the rain it's better to be inconvenienced inside than to be convenience outside so those who are especially at the edge of the canopy my apologies just to break so that we help these people let's not allow them even if it's to be at the at the edge no problem we all know that is the season and then there's the crowds of people everywhere it's only responsible that at least we are thoughtful praise the name of the lord are we together so paul was praying and he said ephesians 1 17 that the father of our lord jesus the father of glory may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom so wisdom is not just a mental state there is the spirit of wisdom you find that in isaiah 11 also and verse 2 the spirit of dominion the spirit of the lord then the next you find is the spirit of wisdom and understanding hallelujah this is very powerful and james chapter 3 from verse 15 the bible there we're not really doing an extensive study on wisdom just to connect it to the teaching on glory the bible tells us that there are three kinds or three levels of wisdom apostle james now that the first is the wisdom that is earthly earthly wisdom sophia it is called number two or four kinds really wisdom that is sensual just brain work common sense then there is wisdom that is devilish or demonic verse 16 we're reading to 17 it says for where there is envy and strife and there's confusion and every evil work then 17 says but the wisdom that is from above so there is the wisdom that is from above supernatural wisdom there is earthly wisdom there is sensual wisdom are we together and then there is demonic wisdom so that there is no confusion as to what we are talking about we are talking of wisdom that descends from above the bible says it is first pure peaceable gentle everybody say wisdom in first corinthians chapter 2 we we'll begin our reading from verse 6 let's hurry up please first corinthians chapter 2 we we'll begin from verse 6 apostle paul was teaching us and he said how be it we speak wisdom among them that are mature or perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that comes to not seven it says but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery and then he says even the hidden wisdom of god that was ordained or designed for our glory are we together now very very important so there is the wisdom that connects to the glorification of the saints so that in their being glorified the father will be glorified the wisdom that has been ordained for our glory is someone learning already say wisdom very very important in mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 the bible says when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence had this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him and even such mighty works that are wrought by his hands there is a relationship between wisdom and mighty works hallelujah what wisdom is this there is a level of wisdom listen to me ladies and gentlemen there is a level of wisdom that can be made manifest through a man and through a life and a destiny that is higher than your age your gender your exposure your level of experience 
and when you access that kind of wisdom please look at me it will be impossible for your life to be ordinary that anyone who sees that wisdom being displayed in and through your life they will have to glorify your father which is in heaven everybody say wisdom very very powerful let me give you two definitions of wisdom very quickly i love this definition it came in the place of prayer that wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and the inspired word please write it down wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life problems i will take it again wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and the inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life's problems is called wisdom you know it is wisdom when you are able to make with it accurate decisions you know it is wisdom when you are able to use it to provide solutions someone say wisdom please look up decisions decide destiny i have taught you this again and again and that your decisions are products of your orientation products of the information that mold and make your belief system when you are able to access superior wisdom the wisdom of god it translates in the kind and quality of decisions that you make number two it it the wisdom of god is at work in your life to the degree to which you are able to provide supernatural solutions to problems in your own life and problems in the lives of others that means if your life is full of problems without answers there is bankruptcy of divine wisdom if your decisions keep leading you to pain and regret and trouble it means you are you don't have wisdom or you are using another kind of wisdom maybe earthly wisdom maybe sensual wisdom common sense maybe even diabolic wisdom but the wisdom from above will always take you above are we together yes wisdom most believers do not know how to access the wisdom of god that translates into making quality decisions personal decisions ministry decisions family decisions financial decisions corporate decisions and then provide supernatural solution let me tell you the truth in these end times if you depend just on wisdom that has come through your age or wisdom that has come just from school alone as important as that is or wisdom that has come through common sense get ready to recycle pain in your life because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man the bible says but the end thereof are the ways of death the wisdom of god is so powerful it will not look like it yet that is the way is someone hearing me the wisdom of god when supernatural wisdom comes god will make you walk around jericho seven times instead of fighting physically if you fight with the sword even if you win you will bleed there will be injuries and yet god can give you sweatless triumph at the instance of wisdom there are some battles just because they are battles does not mean you must fight mm -mm. the most important thing is that you win we need to pray and cry for wisdom my prayer as a leader my prayer as an individual all the time if i pray for myself is that god will give me wisdom i have seen the fruit of wisdom so far i have seen the fruit of wisdom in this ministry i have seen the fruit of wisdom in my life are we together now there are results that only wisdom can bring i wish i had the time please get my message on wisdom i've taught on that you need to pray and cry and say lord i am tired of making foolish decisions there are decisions that keep recycling my pain people I, I make decisions every day and those decisions don't move me forward 
you need to start making qualitative decisions one decision that buys 10 years for you one decision that buys 20 years one decision that buys long life one decision that buys influence you can have one decision like Esau that will sell your lifetime do you know it was a decision Esau took one decision using a temporary carrying a temporal a permanent treasure to solve a temporal problem we were saying it i think it was with the leaders that there are people the moment they are hungry they look at anything around their life that they can sell quickly they will carry a laptop of one hundred and thirty thousand and sell it for ten thousand because they want to smoke with it or eat with it that is the esau dimension of foolishness are we together and you eat in a restaurant five thousand or whatever it is and your laptop is gone with all the information there there are people who carry wristwatches carry their shoes and sell it there are many other people who are making unwise decisions like leaving god for money foolish decision is that true allowing your spiritual life to go down because you are looking for fame foolish decision we need to pray and cry for wisdom listen let me tell you the truth living in today's world requires working in wisdom because the variety of options are many and all of them look like god is later you will find out that you have been wasting your time so that you would not waste 15 years of your life only to turn back and find out that i took a path that i thought was god but was not god there are preachers making decisions that will end them in trouble there are businessmen making decisions that will end them in trouble some of us today our loved ones respectfully speaking they took decisions that brought us into all kinds of demonic things decisions and then supernatural solutions how will people ignore you when your life begins to command solutions by the wisdom of god you are teaching you are guiding that the opening of your mouth are we together now is the communication of divine wisdom please lay your hand on your head if you don't mind and pray in one minute father i receive an impartation of divine wisdom i confess that my decisions are not superior it is very clear that from my decisions i have made mistakes some of you your wrong decisions is why you are where you are right now it removed 10 years from your life it removed glory and honor from your life someone is praying lay your hands on your head and decree and declare that in the name of jesus christ the glory of god revealed and expressed as the wisdom of god must find expression in my life tired of wrong decisions tired of wrong decisions tired of a life that is barren of results someone is praying hallelujah how do you access the wisdom of god two principal channels or three principal channels really number one through the word of god second timothy three second timothy three i believe that's verse 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise what makes you wise the holy scriptures the holy scriptures does not make men foolish ladies and gentlemen for those who think that studying the bible makes is is, is a necessary luggage you have to understand that contained in this word of god this bible you see is the wisdom of god that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation holy scriptures can make men wise number two you can ask for wisdom in prayer james was teaching us does any man lack wisdom he said let him ask let him ask let him ask if you lack wisdom ask ask of god 
solomon asked for an understanding heart men can ask for wisdom that's the second key very quickly so number one from scripture number two from number three impartation from the careers of this wisdom with proofs number three impartation yes sir you can receive impartation of divine supernatural wisdom from those who carry it there are people that carry divine wisdom and you can receive impartation from these men and women hallelujah most times when i have the privilege of meeting any of the fathers of faith if ever they ask me for anything to pray for i pray for wisdom i say the grace that is at work in their lives in various dimensions especially wisdom because let me tell you the truth when you ever get to a position of leadership you will learn that the variables for success are many and they are very confusing three roads can look the same and you find out that they are not the same you have to follow them is the sixth year of following them that will show you that it was foolishness you need god to help you if you look at it by the physical things you can put a and a a and b and it may not work you need wisdom hallelujah is someone getting this very very important let's recap again number one from scripture number two by asking in prayer and then number three let's look at an example of receiving impartation through wisdom numbers chapter 27 please from 18 and 20 very quickly and then we'll look at deuteronomy 34 9 numbers 27 from verse 18 and the lord said unto moses take thee joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom there is a spirit and lay your hands upon him uh-huh and then he says set him before eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him charge in their sight verse 20 he says thou shalt put some of your honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of israel might be obedient so he was instructed to lay hands upon joshua let's see what came upon him deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9 deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 he says and joshua the son of Nun was full of what the spirit of wisdom how did he get it for moses had laid his hands upon him laying on of hands does not mean directly putting a hand on you it's a doctrine is captured the laying on of hands means a system of transfer are we together now yes you can lay hands prophetically you can lay hands directly impartation is powerful and tonight someone who came here to church in the name of jesus you will receive practically an impartation of the spirit of wisdom you will know that it has come upon you because in one month your results will show it will show in your ministry it will show in your life quality superior spiritual decisions in the name of jesus christ wisdom number two let's hurry up we need to pray we need to pray let not the wise man glory in his wisdom number two power what is power power is the supernatural force that is responsible for enforcing the will of god god's ability at work in a human and material vessel but power is a supernatural god's supernatural force and the assignment of power is to enforce the will of god that means power is only against what is against the will of god are we together the power of god does not just enforce everything the assignment of the power of god is to make sure the will of god happens in a life in a church in a ministry so if god is the one against you that power will not help you most people think power is just a force that creates changes randomly no supernatural power that comes from god 
only comes at the instance of his will and the assignment of the power of god is to see that his will for your life is enforced let not the strong man or the powerful man or the man with might romans chapter 1 and verse 4 it takes power to declare god to be the to declare jesus as the son of god romans chapter 1 and verse 4 let's start from 3 and 4 let's go to 3 and then we'll read 4 again my apologies is sad you are not following me here he said concerning his son jesus our lord which was made of the seed of david according to the flesh verse 4 he says and declared to be the son of god with power not with noise declared to be the son of god with power you want to declare that jesus is the son of god you need power Ah, Shaliba Rosaziata. When you stand before that sick body, you want to declare that he's Lord, the Son of the Living God. It will take more than grammar, it will take more than the excellency of speech. You will need power. Most believers lack power. It takes power. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible himself speaking about God and speaking about the word of God. He said, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power upholding all things psalm 24 and verse 10 i can't read that scripture enough psalm 24 and verse 10 who is this king of glory the lord of hosts let's let's read verse verse 9 and 10. lift up your heads o ye gates even lift them ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in verse 10. it says who is this king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory did i get something wrong there's one of it that says is the lord who is strong and mighty hallelujah verse 8 the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle say strong and mighty he was the lord strong and mighty and is the lord strong and mighty that's why he became victorious in battle if you are not strong and mighty even if you are sincere and faithful you will still fail the requirement for dominion is more than sincerity of heart it is strength and might somebody says strength if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small someone needs to access superior supernatural power supernatural power is not for preachers my dear people demons don't look for only preachers they look for everybody you need power to survive the times today hallelujah who is this king of glory he's the lord strong and mighty Do you know many believers want to see supernatural results in their lives but they ignore the place of spiritual empowerment jesus himself spoke to the disciples he said tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power i have been teaching you for three years i taught you but all my lecture will sound like rubbish in the face of real life situations until you have power imagine them standing and looking at that guy at get beautiful and say let me tell you something on the seventh day of three years ago jesus christ came to us and he taught us he said when you see that a man cannot stand number one show compassion point number two speak to the person kindly number three ask the person to stand up that the father can. the man will just be looking at them the bible says he looked at them expecting to receive from today everybody who looks at you expecting to receive they will not be disappointed in the name of jesus christ please look at me there are some of you your family members have been looking at you for 10 years expecting to receive you told them you are born again and they said well i don't know the kind of christianity we are doing but i trust you and they have been looking at you on the ground for 10 years till now they have not received anything yet you have been preaching you have been talking stories but it's not backed up with power 
this night that power factor may it come upon your life hear me he says i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god not the statement of god not just the message of god it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believes i believe in the power of god i have seen what the power of god can do it can subdue principalities and powers it can shut the mouth of lions the power of God can lift a man from where he is to where he needs to be. Can I tell you sincerely, you are not really a blessing if you ignore the power of God in your life. How then will you be able to bless people? Most, do you know that most of people's problems are spiritual? So if all you have is intellectual solutions, you will be limited. Intellectual solutions will only solve intellectual problems. Physical solutions will only solve uh, physical problems. If I'm hungry, I don't need power. I need food. Yam and egg and rice and whatever. I eat it, it solves the problem. But if you still eat it physically and you are not satisfied, something else is wrong with you. Because you now see that the physical rice did not solve that problem. If you lack blood, lack blood like you're a medical person and they're giving you several pints of blood, you are not bleeding and yet we don't know where the blood is going to. That one now is no longer typhoid and malaria somebody somewhere is stealing from somewhere that is the ministry of the thief represented there at that point you need more than a drink what do you need shout it power that's right believe me the times that we live in those who lack power will fall by the wayside hallelujah those who lack power mysterious problems are being unleashed from hell to the earth and you see people carrying problems that they cannot explain my leg is paining me from leg pain the person sits down and die does leg pain kill no that is more than a medical problem my dear people you ask medical doctors right now the medical doctors are becoming more spiritual when they diagnose a patient once twice they will tell you listen what church do you attend go and fight a man of god quickly because they themselves are learning the enemy has done this the enemy has done this the enemy has caused division in this family that quarrel between father and mother is not normal there is a normal misunderstanding in marriage but this one now is being empowered by a demon spirit the devil wants to cause trouble no that barrenness situation is not just a natural cause of time this is the devil trying to raise his ugly head can i tell you every time you see satan take back wisdom bring out power the language that conquers satan is power hear me you don't use wisdom for spirits no you use wisdom for men wisdom is in the realm of men when you are dealing with the cosmos you need wisdom but when you are dealing with the realm of the spirit take back wisdom and bring power hear me listen as a man of god somebody is telling you this is what is happening i'm collecting my salary i go back home and i'm applying every principle and something happens do you know respectfully speaking in spite of the strike that has happened now when lecturers are paid it should be some accumulated salary there are people who have all kinds of wicked spirits waiting they will never have any problem until that arrears is paid suddenly mysterious problems arise everybody becomes sick even if it's 10 million it must finish and then they are fine do you need wisdom no you have been advising spirits that's why they have not gone we were never given the mandate to advise them you think they are dull no the sons of skiva came with nonsense and they were speaking english and the demons said paul we know jesus we know they begged jesus and jesus made one utterance go and that was it listen 
if you allow the devil deceive you and say i am not in ministry so power is not for me i am just a mother with five children i am just a businessman except the realm of the spirit has no influence over your affairs hmm. man of god you want to build a robust ministry for jesus it will take more than just the natural secular church growth principles those are managerial principles and they are important but they are only important if the realm of the spirit is corrected listen if you were alive in the days of noah whether you were a businessman whether you are an entrepreneur whether you were a graduate when that flood comes it will carry all of you together and crash land you it's only those who had the power the wisdom walked on earth but that rain did not come by geography the bible says the heaven sent his rain the earth also sent his rain whoever it meets in between and noah was there can i tell you you will be deceived to believe that it was just the ark that held them alone no they didn't have the kind of sophistication of technology today the ark cannot hold you have you ever seen a flood happening is it a nice river that is just going like that it has capsized you've forgotten the titanic how big would the ark have been it was not kept just by physics there was a hand that kept there after they finished building it no one knows he knows what he did with him and god and god just held it like that while the rivers were moving and the oceans do you know what it means for the whole earth to be immersed with water let me tell you you went to school that the cold the cold alone the freezing temperature would have killed everybody inside that ark what would kill them is not water what would kill them is the temperature by what mechanism did they remain hot when the whole earth was immersed in water come on please use your mind no it's more than the miracle of hiding in a place they were kept by power wisdom built the ark but power kept it through the storms wisdom can build your business but it's power that will keep it against wicked people wisdom can build anything but it is power that keeps it hear me the wisdom of the world can give you a child but it is power that will keep that child the wisdom of the world can give you business but it is power that will keep the wisdom of the world can give you a ministry but believe me ladies and gentlemen it takes power dominion is a language of power rule thou in the midst of your enemies how do you rule by discussion by negotiation no someone pray in one minute this advising spiritual situations comes to an end the power that changes situations i contend for it tonight we are rapping up for pray pray In the name of Jesus, Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. We are still praying over power. Jeremiah 32. It says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. How? By thy great power and thy stretch out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee because of the presence of power. The cure for difficulty is power. Oh. Our Lord God, you made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. 
it's good to have wisdom but let me tell you sincerely you need the power of god are we together and the principal way the power of god is released from the saints over situation is through words where the word of a king is that means if there is no power is either the king is not speaking or he's not a king but if he's a king and he opens his mouth there should be power where the word of a king is he didn't say there is counseling many of us keep advising wicked spirits in our life this spirit of death is not fair now why will you keep coming like that spirits no say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power i will never do ministry without power it's a risk dear people it's a risk and when i talk about power i'm not just talking of falling down and standing up you see pentecostals and charismatics have messed up this whole thing many people fall down and stand up and nothing changes we are talking of power that forces compliance that when god says by this time tomorrow that power moves and clears everything that want to make it the day after it must be tomorrow because god has said so hallelujah let me give you the last one we have to wrap up hmm. sit down please jeremiah 29 jeremiah 9 23 let's finish up so let the wise man not glow in, in his wisdom the first expression of glory is wisdom divine wisdom number two power might ability supernatural ability and then number three it says let not the rich man glory in his riches someone say wealth this is the captain of this realm wealth this is very important there is no dominion in the earth realm in its entirety without wealth in fact the word glory when you study the word cardboard the root word means the weightiness of a thing it is an expression it was used in ancient time to measure money because then they use gold and the rest so the weightier the precious metal the more the value so the word glory there is the word wealth or the weightiness can i tell you the truth my dear people please come to terms with it once and for all that if you are poor financially poor you are going to be limited i have thought again and again on the issue of finances the greatest negative effect of poverty and lack is limitation what does it mean to be limit to be limited to be stopped from advancement that's it if poverty were neutral didn't do anything didn't affect anyone that would be fine every time god bless people in the bible go and read it there is nobody who walked with god that among the several blessings that came to him wealth was not part of is it abraham is it isaac is it jacob is it ruth is it lot was it even jesus himself are we together now the subject of wealth is a very broad one we've done a series go to koinonia global and get it and listen to it but let me tell you the truth many of you as you are seated right now the principal cause of your anger and frustration is the limitation it's not the lack of money it's the limitation it has created most of us don't like money the way we think it is just because the limitation that it has provided has made you become so obsessed about it are we together by the time your child is here seated and his school fees cannot be paid let's say you're a man of god three children their school fees cannot be paid and the owner of the school is your member is what that's right and now you stand upon the pulpit and say i know my god is faithful and the director of your school is watching you he has given you chance because you are his pastor six months you have not paid the school fees 
you will not have the confidence to stand and preach the faithfulness of god and the limitation it provides unnecessary battle between you people because now he respects you as his man of god but then they need to move forward and now you are not a good example poverty is evil did you hear what i said now when you hear things like this make sure you are first spiritual before you answer because for carnal people anything that brings delight to the flesh they receive it with joy i have taught you that our perspective when it has to do with wealth and abundance believe me ladies and gentlemen is not self-aggrandizement remember our, 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 our beginning scripture they glorify god in me let no one preach you into accepting wealth uh, poverty as part of the plan of god for your life have you not seen what it has done for people poverty has dehumanized people brought people lower than the dignity that god set for them that thing is evil you have an assignment in your lifetime to conquer it as fast as possible the strange thing is that you can never have wealth if you don't have the first two because it is the presence of the first two in your life that guarantees the manifestation of that third level of glory the combination of wisdom and power is what can bring wealth you cannot have sustainable wealth it says strong men retain riches wise men can get it but it takes power to retain it when you ignore wisdom and you ignore power then forget about walking in the reality of the blessing of the lord yesterday we discussed the seed of abraham remember three levels justification by faith the blessing of abraham then the blessing the holy spirit then the blessings of abraham all of the fringe benefits the physical expressions i made up my mind as an individual that i will not be poor and this is not just some chanting of gibberish from flesh driven people it was a decision that came as a result of concluding you know how the psalm is taught he said when i see the stars i examine the works of your hands then i came to the conclusion what is man me too i sat down i looked at my life and i said no at the end of my life here is my conclusion lack and poverty are limiting and destructive are we together many believers are looking like slaves in this country today slaves in africa because of this and the devil knows this so he will do something to the economy you are not truly prosperous until the house of god testifies of your prosperity if the house of god cannot testify of your prosperity you are not truly prosperous I'm, what I'm saying is beyond just meeting your needs having a house or being able to pay rent and having children that's wonderful we give glory to God but we're talking of the level where you can go up the mountain like Haggai said and you can bring wood and you can build God a house that you will be glorified he said the silver is mine and the gold is mine I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth and the desire of nations will come to you the silver is mine he said go up the mountain and bring wood you don't get wood from a mountain you get wood from the forest but this kind of wood that is needed you have to spend time to the sphere of influence to bring it and you will use it to build God a house and you will be glorified hallelujah there are many sincere preachers today who are falling into the trap of manipulation simply because of economy especially at the times that we live right now people are compromising at different levels because of this the rod of the wicked the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous do you know why it says lest he dips his hand the rod of the, the lot of the righteous there means their inheritance their land their estate that means it's a prayer point it's not a memory verse that when you are praying say lord let the rod of the wicked not rest upon my inheritance because it can make me do things i never planned doing the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands 
in iniquity we're about to pray if god is to be glorified in you you must produce results carry this mentality tonight that you are a brand ambassador you are not branding an earthly product you are not branding cosmetics you are branding you are standing to defend the name and the purposes of the king of kings and the lord of lords and that to be an effective ambassador you must move beyond the realm and the desire to be a celebrity you must move beyond being a celebrity and you must have a sincere desire is someone learning now praise the name of the lord a sincere desire to be an ambassador a witness of the truth we're going to pray and then i'll speak over your life and then we'll be done i will pray just minister we're not going to have the time to i may not have the time to prophesy or do this but this that i've told you you practice this go and get teachings on wisdom go and get teachings on power go and get teachings on wealth combine them you know how you cook soup you first start with water or oil or whatever you put there and then you look for you look for whatever ingredient and at the end of it you will taste and see that that soup is good is that true after you you, you can start smelling it you can start knowing that ah, no no I, I this thing is making sense but it doesn't really profit you until you dip your spoon or whatever and then you taste it you know that it is now ready for my consumption and the consumption of others some of us you are not ready to be a blessing yet you are still in that process you need to allow the holy spirit guide you now god has given you tools go and cry for wisdom go and cry for genuine power and cry that god will grant you grace to be blessed and then you combine those ingredients and wear them like an armor you are ready to be an ambassador when you face the world with difficult situations you will be indomitable over the cosmos because you have the arsenal of wisdom when the realm of the spirit seeks to interfere with the cosmos to manipulate against the purposes of god you have the weapon of power that can speak and then for efficiency in the world of men you will need resources because the rich will always rule over the poor and the borrower will be slave to the lender he said the rich and the poor dwell together the lord is the maker of them all he's not the maker of them so but he's the maker of them all man of god don't just pray for members alone sincerely i will tell you it is honest to stand before god and say lord the wisdom and the power and the grace to attract and retain wealth there is the wisdom side of wealth but believe me when i tell you there is the power side of wealth the beautiful thing is that the wisdom side of wealth takes time for you to learn but the power side can be imparted immediately like now are we together oh yes by this time tomorrow is not an advice mm -mm. Mm -mm. go and fish is wisdom you have to learn when the fish will stay and put your net and be patient overnight but by this time tomorrow is the ministry of power there are some urgencies in your life you don't need grace to go and farm you have to wait four months there are times you will need manna to come from heaven immediately who prepared it is not our business we know that it needs at least it didn't come from hell it came from heaven some of you the situation you are in now you have made mistakes already you don't need wisdom now you need power to correct that mistake first then wisdom can now help you to now make it well can i speak over your life please rise up on your feet there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones. Only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are kings. There are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are thrones. But only a Shua will reign forever. Don't be no one. 
ready to be an ambassador not just a celebrity I need more than influence I need influence that is connected to purpose someone pray in the name of Jesus now hear me this is our final night together I have just one more session and then we'll leave tomorrow I'll be praying with the prayer department by 6.30 just one hour 6.37 I don't know how we're going to do it it's particularly for the prayer department but we can't stop all if you are invited and you can find the space i just want to do an early morning prayer with the prayer department and then we'll be good to do some other things and leave but for now just spare me two minutes i want to speak over your life impartation is powerful you don't have to kneel you don't have to do just be ready to receive i truly believe in the power of impartation impartation is receiving what you do not have or what you do not have enough of the wisdom of god is transferable we have received from those who by the privilege of god's grace we have received from the word of god we have received by a sincere desire in prayer for everyone that asketh receiveth but we have also received from those who are the carriers of this wisdom with proof hallelujah in the name of jesus christ and by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus like the dew of Hammon, whether you're a man of god whether in this house or just coming to visit whether you are a businessman whether you are a lecturer whether you are a parent in the name of jesus i declare at the count of three let that grace that wisdom like you have never received let it come upon you one two three take that wisdom now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now please help them receive that grace right now superior wisdom i impart it upon you supernatural solutions extraordinary decisions no more foolish decisions in the name of jesus receive that grace i impart it upon you by the power of the holy ghost wisdom in the city wisdom in the country wisdom academically speaking wisdom maritally wisdom business wise wisdom in ministry in the name of jesus christ number two Maleka Tabara Tosia. Ah, this one will come on many people. The power of the Holy Ghost. Ashanekete Bata. Madish Kabiata. Embreketes Kabikata. The power of the Holy Ghost to excel in ministry. The power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, wherever you are, inside and outside, at the count of three, take that power now. One, two, Three, take that power, take that anointing for signs and wonders, supernatural miracles. The power of the Holy Ghost, man of God, doing ministry this way you will not rise. Take fresh grace, fresh anointing, fresh grace. Let the gifts of the Spirit be activated now. The gifts of the Spirit be activated now. The power to heal be activated now. The power to deliver be activated now. Please help them. Paranda Zadekate Barakatos Koto Brentege Balakus, a Fareska Tega Barasko Zigate, Karekate Bala. God is still releasing something. 
I'm still seeing like like dew just falling. Maras Shade, Aras Kodia, Embre Gadeva Lagos Kadia. You will never be the same. Shabro Shadia Kabala. Power upon your hands. Mantle and oil upon your head. Strange results. Strange dimension. Strange results. Strange dimension. Number three, let the rich man not glory in his riches. I want to declare that grace. Listen, when it has to do with wealth and prosperity, I have taught you there are keys and there are principles you need. Value, wealth, increase, investments, so on and so forth. But hear me, truly, there is the power to prosper there is a grace from god i want to not only speak over your finances but release something on you most of you have value but your value is not anointed father in the name of jesus christ let as many young and old male and female everyone here who desires this grace the power and the unction to prosper may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now prosper your finances in the name of jesus christ hear me every helper who must arise in your life in your ministry in your business some of you to bail you out of your current financial condition in the name of jesus christ between now and the end of this month we call them by the power of the holy ghost please believe it believe it i call them by the power of the holy ghost there are many of you by reason of this declaration you will step into prepared blessings Prepare blessings. Prepare blessings. Let me pray for every family here. I know that economically speaking, it looks like things are tied. But in Jesus' name, I place a mark of exemption upon you. A mark of exemption upon your children. A mark of exemption upon your children's children i place a mark of exemption upon your business upon your ministry you will not fall financially in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone holding what belongs to you in the name of jesus may it be released to you now Hear me anyone here who needs a job i decree and declare by the power that created the heavens and the earth between now and the next three months may a supernatural job locate you let it locate you let it locate you let it locate you in the name of jesus christ i declare promotion everyone who has remained at the same level experience increase right now experience is right now hear me anyone here who is in business and it has refused to work first the wisdom you need may god grant you the power you need may god grant you now that i've prayed for you let me speak to the business in the name of jesus i declare every dead or dying business here come back to life now come back to life now hallelujah please hear me i heard someone was telling me that there was a threat letter that was given to one one environment one community or so somewhere around 
in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I decree and declare if there is any conspiracy agree with me or don't sit down and say in the name of Jesus we stand as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ we declare cancelled now we release the forces of judgment in the name of Jesus Christ there is no peace for the wicked in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death if there is anyone here the plague of death is already following you you are having all kinds of dreams people are already sending you prophetic words you are seeing something that should not be in the name of Jesus whether it is dead by sickness whether it's dead by accident, whether it's dead by the activities of wicked men, be exempted from death now. Be exempted from death now. Now, very quickly, please lay your hand if you are trusting God for healing. I just have one minute to do this. Any part of your body you are trusting God for healing, hallelujah. You are trusting God for healing, lay your hands right there. And I want to pray for you in one minute. Father, people have come here tonight trusting to receive healing. You are the great physician. And there is still the balm in Gilead. Therefore, I decree and declare, there is someone you have a projection that looks like Goita. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is taking that devilish thing away from you. Now I decree and declare that the spirit that is back of any infirmity by the power that raised Christ from the dead we decree and declare that spirit is hereby caused now. And then I declare be healed right now. The Lord is healing someone you have an issue of blood. The power of God is coming on you and the Lord is healing you right now. Let that demonic thing leave you now someone you have a problem with your gum your gum your teeth now your gum not really the teeth but the gum the power of god is touching you right where you are in the name of jesus there is someone i think is your father he's going blind with what i'm seeing in my vision it's like he's having glaucoma and the thing is deteriorating and they've told you nothing much can be done in the name of jesus may the power of jesus rest right now and bring you healing for in Jesus name we pray koinonia zaria I declare over you it is from glory to glory it is from grace to grace fire will never stop falling upon this altar in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ let's celebrate Jesus give him a big hand clap hallelujah now let me make an altar call very quickly you may sit if you want you are in this place and you need Jesus please listen carefully let's minimize movement you are here and you need Jesus you are saying apostle my life has not yet been in place I need Jesus Christ please let me have your attention you are outside you are inside and you're saying apostle I want you to give me a chance I want to surrender everything to Jesus you are in any of the overflows outside or you are here and you're saying apostle i've given my heart to jesus christ but for some reason i deviated and my life has gone down and i need to make it right i'm only going to count one to five i want you to run we have just one minute for you koinonia let's begin to clap for them as they come come run to jesus you can shift them and take them somewhere Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Two. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Please come. I've made up my mind to go God's way 
the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way. Perhaps you want to come out and you are saying, Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. You can join them right now before I begin to pray. You are saying, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm a sinner, but I, I must confess I am not sure. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. Come and join them right now. Please, quickly, if you are coming, you should have known by now. You need Jesus. Please make your way to the front. Let's celebrate them as they come. Now, I salute every one of you, young and old alike, for making this noble decision for Jesus. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I appreciate you for this bold decision and all of you who are um, at the various overflows. And then also those following online, here's your chance to make it right with Jesus. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Please say this after me. Say it loud and clear. Some of you are crying. Don't worry. Jesus Christ is here with you. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I need you in my life. Right now, I confess that I'm not able to help myself. But I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart be my savior be my lord be my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you you are able to save unto the uttermost i declare by the integrity of god's word that your sins are forgiven and i call you recipients of the life of god in the name of jesus the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life and i declare that eternal life is resident within your spirit from tonight you are the righteousness of god in christ and you go from glory to glory and grace to grace forward ever and backward never for in jesus name i pray congratulations god bless you please may i request that you follow the counselors they are waving their hands there's a gentleman waving his hands please all of you follow in concert they'll have a word with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's clap for them as they go please very very quickly